I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I Hello there, and welcome back to Fundamentals. Uh, this will be a video in the Fundamentals uh, lane. And it is what that says, dim bulb tester. Now, this is one of the most, if you don't have anything other than voltmeter and some basic hand tools, um, the only other th thing you must have is it in my view is a dim bulb tester and they're so easy to make out of uh, in my case stuff I had sitting around the house but not everybody does what I do so um, but it's really cheap to make one of these and it will save you radio and as we go through this I'll talk about how it will save you radio but here's the here's the deal with the dim bulb tester it limits the amount of current that can go into an old radio. When you're repairing an old radio and you plug it in to the wall, uh, if there's something wrong inside, it will uh, pull enough current to fry itself. Um, the dim bulb test will prevent that for the most part. Um, if you turn it on and the bulb is telling you that it's drawing too much current and you leave it on anyway, you're going to fry your equipment anyway. So you have to pay attention to what this thing is telling you. But this is a dim bulb tester. It doesn't get much simpler than this thing. Uh, it has a plug-in cord. It has an on-off switch. It's connected to uh, one side of a light bulb. The other side of the light bulb goes to one side of an outlet. The other side of the outlet goes back to the wall, to the uh, plug-in. It's really that simple. And it will save your bacon um, and protect you from doing harm <laughs> to the equipment you're trying to fix. So it's really simple, and I'll show you how to make one. Can't be easier. Need a scrap of wood? This is one I've had around the house. I don't even remember. Probably a shelf somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, I don't remember what it was for. You need an electrical box like that. It could be, this is a very thin one. It could be metal. It could be uh, another shape, so long as it holds your switch and your outlet. And you need a switch and an outlet. This is one I had in my junk box. Um, I can't remember why I got it in the first place. When you buy these, at least in this case, right here when you buy these there will probably be a strap that runs from there to there and what that does is connect the uh, switch here to one side of the outlet it doesn't connect to the other side of the outlet but just the same one um, you can i guess i want to say you must remove that that must come out so that these the switch is alone and the outlet itself is alone two different things because we're going to take a wire from here and run it to the light bulb out the light bulb back into this side so there if there's a a uh, bridge connecting those two things uh, snap that off it's built to be snapped off that's why it uh, that's why they put it on there so you can isolate these two if you if you want to and we do so you need one of those you need a place to screw in a light bulb. There is a place to screw in a light bulb. These are a couple of bucks in your local hardware store. You need a uh, couple of feet of number 14, in this case wire. But you don't really need a couple of feet, you need a couple of inches. But this is what I have on hand. Uh, black and white because in the United States, white is always neutral and black is always hot, so we'll keep that in mind. So you need that. You need a uh, cord. This cord, I cut off a piece of equipment, or not equipment even, I think an old lamp or something. But it's a good cord, and it has a uh, polarized 
power connector, which means that one spade is wider than the other spade. So this wide one is the one that is always neutral. This one is always hot in the United States um, and Canada. I presume Mexico too, although I'm not sure. Anyway, and the last thing you need is, oh, last two things. You need a nice cover to cover that up with so nobody can get their fingers in there. And you need a light bulb. This is an appliance light bulb, 40 watt appliance light bulb. The bulb you use in your dim bulb tester, the wattage of it will determine how big of a radio, or actually the other way around. The, the wattage of the radio that you're testing, that you're repairing, will determine how big this bulb is. This bulb should be one and a half to two times the wattage of the uh, radio you're working on. For example, right this moment I'm working on a, a little GE tabletop. And let me move this stuff to the side. Show you right here. The label in the bottom of this radio uh, says it's 25 watts. Right here. It's 25 watt radio. It means it, it burns up 25 watts worth of power. Uh, to buy the right light bulb for this radio, to use the right light bulb, it should be one and a half uh, times 25 to two times 25. So it should be a 50 watt, probably. But boy, incandescent bulbs are really hard to find these days. And uh, this 40 water, the appliance bulb is, is, a, is a steady one. You can find those anywhere. By the way, it must be incandescent. This has to be an incandescent bulb. It cannot be LED or halogen or uh, fluorescent or anything else. It has to be incandescent because of what's inside there. That wire in there is tungsten. And tungsten has a very special characteristic. When it's cool, like it is right now, it only would measure a few ohms of resistance. But as it gets hot, as it draws, as current is passed through it, uh, its resistance goes up. And that's how, why we call a dim bulb tester a current limiter. The bulb gets, the bulb resistance goes up as the current flowing through here goes up. And the current will flow through your radio out here, back into here and around. So that bulb is what's controlling the amount of current uh, that, will, that will pass through your radio. And that's what will save your radio. So incandescent only, and it has to be the correct wattage. A wattage appropriate for uh, for your uh, radio and this one is appropriate for the little radio I'm working on at the moment all right let's get started we'll start by uh, mounting our box to the board uh, the box will accept the power cord coming in through this slot right here they have, a, they, they have a little piece of plastic in there so they wedge in and don't pull out very easily. So the power cord will go into the box right there once the box is mounted. We'll start with mounting the box. Okay, we have the um, box mounted. And that screw isn't down quite all the way. That's better. All right, the box is mounted. Now we'll run our one end, one end, the lead end of our uh, power cord. Through the slot down here. <coughs> and pull enough out to be able to work with it. <coughs> Now 
Now what I want, and there's no reason for this in particular, what I want to do is have the, um, the hmm. is there a reason? I'm not sure. What I want to do is have the hot lead, the narrow of the two, uh, the white is neutral, the narrow one is hot. When I have the hot lead run through the switch, the light bulb, through the um, outlet and back uh, to the neutral lead. So I have to figure out which one of these is the um, <coughs> neutral. And typically, your cord, I don't know if you can see that, there's a texture on one side of this cord. Let's just let me get a light over here. Yeah, you can sort of see it right there. There's a feature on one c on one side that's absent on the other side, and you can use that as a marker for which for which is which. Uh, <coughs> but first, because this is a a um, a hardware store plug somebody put on here. I don't know which they wired to what. Uh, I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe that the the indicated side of this twin lead goes to neutral. But I guess you can make your own rules. So I need to find that out first. So I'll split the end of our power line here. and draw back some of it. And strip the end. Of both of them. And then take my <coughs> digital ohm meter, or sorry, digital multimeter, and uh, figure out which is what. So this will squawk when I get continuity. So I'll find the textured side, that's this one, see where that's going. It's either going to the neutral or to the hot. In this case, it's going to the hot side. Okay. So now I know that. And I now know that this is the hot lead. And I'll get this out of the way. And I'll strip. All right. So <coughs> we have a hot lead. It's going to the switch. The switch has two sides, one with a black nut. Modern switches, really old switches, don't have the fancy addition of a painted screw. Uh, this one does. Um, so I'm going to run the, the hot lead, pull a little more insulation off of it, and run it to the black side of the switch. So now the hot side, this one, the narrow, narrow speed, is connected to this side of the switch. Now on this side, this is where my uh, number 14 wire comes in, I need to run that to the light socket. So, light socket. These are the holes for mounting it. But I need a hole from that will run from uh, the the number uh, the 14 gauge wire will run from this side of the switch through this hole to the light socket 
with one uh, black wire and it needs to go through here and then turn this corner and go into there. So this is plastic. <coughs> I can uh, hopefully nibble a bit of the plastic away and make a, make a way for the wire to go. We'll see out there. Wow. That is not... <coughs> I wouldn't call that durable plastic. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a file and round the... soften the edges of this up a bit. Okay, uh, ease the edges of that a bit. You can do that with sandpaper. I happen to have a round file that I used. Um, so that will go like that. I need a piece of number 14 black wire, which is all tangled up with the white wire, of course. Okay, sorry about all that mess. All right, got my black wire here. It needs to run from the other side of the switch, which is here, through that hole, through that hole, to one side of the lamp. And it doesn't matter which side, one side of the lamp. So I'll get to work on that. By the way, number 14 is probably plenty to serve most radios. Okay, the other side of the switch. We're not touching the, uh, not touching the outlet yet. Just the switch. Of this black wire do I need? I need about that much. That's probably excessive. Say right there, cut this off, set the rest of it aside for the moment. <coughs> we'll have to dress these leads up a bit later as we get all of this put together. Let me pull some of this. Um, I'm going to pull some of this power line back out. So I pry that flap a bit open. Don't pry it too hard, it'll break off. You don't want that yet. Ever. Um, so now I've got some number 14 lead coming out. The other side of the box is going to go through that hole and it's going to mount to that. Why that? Because I like the way it looks. Yeah, which 
one did I say? <laughs> I probably changed targets, didn't I? Oh well. As I said, it really doesn't matter which one it goes to. <clears throat> it's a sunny day in the neighborhood and we live very near uh, an elementary school. So we've got a, a lot of young kids in the neighborhood, which I just love. They seem to have such a good time with life, most of them. outlet from our power cord through the switch to one side of the light bulb. Now we need to run from the other side of the light bulb back into our box and to one side of the, um, the um, outlet itself. Get another length of uh, black wire, and it'll be about the same as the last one. To run from there back through the box to one side of the outlet, which I'll do right now. Okay, now this lead from the other side of the uh, light bulb socket goes back through the hole the original one came from. But this time, per our schematic, it connects to one side of the outlet. So, here's one side of the outlet right here. I'll uh, strip this and mount that wire right there. Okay, and what we have left is this wire, which we can derive from our power cord. So what I did wrong here was I cut these off evenly. Um, I need to run this side of the power cord to this screw right here. So I need to take this other side off, take this side off, and uh, shorten this line a bit. So what I'll do is I'll take this off, I'll put this one here, and then I'll know how short to make um, the other one. 
to take this back off. Okay. And this one goes to the switch. I don't think I need to shorten it at all. I'll just um, reattach it. Ouch. And there we are. Twist that around. That will mount. Screw down right there. This will screw into there. And we have a dim bulb tester. Let me uh, Clean this up a little bit. I'll mount this down into this socket. It's pretty straightforward stuff. If you've never done house wiring before, uh, solid copper wire uh, of this, these gauges, 12, 14 gauge, are very stiff. So you just kind of jam them into place. This stuff this braided wires is much more flexible. This is uh, solid copper wire is uh, does not meet the definition of the word six uh, flexible. It is not flexible. So when you're mounting a socket, you just have to kind of jam it down into place. Um, the socket screws are here, or holes are here and here, and these screws simply go in there. Okay, here we are. I've uh, screwed down the light socket. Here's our on-off switch. Here's our outlet. Wires going through, through the light socket. And the only thing missing in this circuit is your radio. Your radio plugs in right here. And every, anything that's plugged in here will have to have its current limited by whatever light bulb you have screwed in here. In this case, 40 watt. So that's a dim bulb tester right there. Put a cap on it. What did they say in Portlandia? Put a bird on it? Yeah. Well, in my case, I'm putting a cap on it with a screw. And calling it finished. <clears throat> so here it is done. <clears throat> um, and you might say to yourself, got this power cord, I've got a light switch, I've got a light. I'm going to plug this into the outlet on my bench. And I should flip the switch and the light bulb should come on. No, it should not. Um, that's because the circuit is not complete. The circuit isn't complete until your radio is plugged in here. So you can flip that switch all day and that light bulb will not come on or should not come on. <laughs> if it does come on and you're not plugged into a radio, you've done something wrong. But uh, in our case, we got lucky, no light bulb. 